Hello and welcome back to the brightly lit table of reviewing justice. Except we're not going to be reviewing anything today. Instead, we're going to be performing a little something known as education through destruction. Now you remember about 3 years or so ago, I basically had a computer and the hard disk basically fried itself on me. Well, I have said hard disk right here. What we're going to do today is we're going to just well, try and take this hard disk apart. We all have some idea of what's in a hard disk, but I thought it would be nice to, you know, actually open one up and see what's inside. Now, as you can see, this is still sealed. I have not attempted to crack it open. All I've done is look at the fancy screws and decided that, well, I needed a fancy screwdriver to do that. So yeah, without any further ado, I'm just going to try and rip apart the drive, and we'll see how things go. So right, first things first, let's get all the screws open. Incidentally, well, I'll get a closer shot of both the screws as well as the screwdriver, so you can have an idea of what we're dealing with. In case it wasn't clear enough, this drive is basically fried. All the information has been backed up, and well, it's old. I can't really be bothered getting it repaired, so yeah, let's instead take it apart for the sake of education. Anyway, I'm making that point because, well, I don't want you to get too angry about me destroying stuff. This is, like I said, something that has already destroyed itself. Let's see if we can get this open. No, apparently we need to get these off as well. It's gonna take some time. Alright, there we go. We've got all four stickers off now, so I can put the drive back in a shot and get rid of the last four screws. So alright, we are nearly done with all the screws now. Let's get the last one out of there. Alright, so we should be able to lift this up somehow. So yeah, basically I couldn't get the top off, so what I'm going to do is I have found several screws at the bottom as well that are connected to this circuit board. I doubt getting rid of these would help, but we'll give it a shot and we'll see what comes of that. Alright, we've got this which has the power as well as the SCSI port. I believe that's the proper term. If it's not, I'll replace it in editing. But yeah, so this is what connects the drive to your computer. The question of course is why did it come up so easily? Like why isn't it connected to the rest of the drive? It's set like this I believe. So I might have ripped this up by the roots. Oops. Lucky we don't exactly want this in one piece anymore. So that helps. So right, we're not any closer to getting rid of this. So that's kind of tragic. Maybe there is more stuff under the sticker. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get rid of everything I can. So after stabbing this violently with a pair of scissors, I have managed to reveal what is hopefully the final screw and then we'll be able to lift this panel up. Alright, so as it turns out, um, we just need to use a little bit of force. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab this pair of scissors, stick it in there and sort of twist it to lift up the housing. I have no idea if this is the correct thing to do, but it seems to be getting the job done, and I seem to be able to lift this up now. So I'm just gonna do that, and voila. This is a hard disk. This is what a hard disk looks like on the inside. What I've just gotten rid of is of course the cover plate. And well, basically this is the read head which is supposed to swing over the surface of the drive like this. Of course, in doing this, I have permanently damaged the drive. Just opening the cover destroys it already because dust can get in. But of course, moving the head on the surface like this without care, of course, also destroys the drive. Basically, this head never, or rather, is not supposed to touch the surface of the drive. It's actually hovering just a little bit above the drive and that's all it needs to read the content of the disc. Of course, that's too late now because we've sort of smashed it in. This is the spindle. It is of course what helps the drive go around. 
as you can see, there are actually many layers, there are multiple drives like that. It looks like we only have two here, even though I believe some drives can have more. Let's see if we can take this apart even further. There are several screws all around, so I'm going to try and see if I can unscrew anything and we can reveal even more. So let's take this off. I should also mention at this point that there's actually, of course, a motor to turn this disc and a motor here, which will actually move this head back and forth. So the proper names for these, basically, this is the actuator and this is the actuator arm. And of course, we are moving this, which is the read and write head around. And incidentally, when you have a head crash, you might hear, you know, a little continuous clicking sound. And it's basically this. You know, something like that. Alright, after having used some amount of unnecessary force, I have managed to pry out this bit here. I believe this is actually held down very strongly by a magnet. Because of course, a magnet is required to actually, you know, drive the arm and move it around. I'm trying to find some way to lift it up. Yep, it's definitely a magnet. There we go. So yeah, there are two parts of a very strong magnet around here. And you can see the scissors getting attracted immediately to it. Just like that. So yeah, we've got to watch out for that. I did read some things mentioned online about how people actually, you know, hurt themselves because something magnetic just snapped on their hands. So I'm going to try and be very careful with that. So right, you can see basically this magnet combined with, this is probably a permanent magnet as well, and it's set on top like this. These two things together would have helped to shift this head back and forth. Ooh, I've just noticed that all these, well, at least every other spot on here, I don't know how clear it is on the camera, but every other spot on here is actually a screw. So I'm gonna try and just take these apart seems to be the wrong size i might have to actually switch to a different screwdriver in a minute all right i've gone ahead and loosened all six screws around here you can see that this plate now moves around a little so what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue with this process we're gonna try and get the screws up and out let's see how many of these are loose none of them that's fine all right we are nearly done this is the last one of the screws and with this out, this spindle should come right up. And we should be able to extract the platters, like so. So there you go, if you're doing some... Oh, hi, you can see me. Um, if you're doing some kind of, I don't know, science fiction shot, you can use this as a prop. But yeah, this is where I had lots of data stored at one point of time. You can lift this up here. I guess this is a ring to separate the two platters. Right, so I have accidentally managed to get this head out like that. So really, it is this head that is doing all the work. It is skidding back and forth. As you can see, there are four prongs, even though they made they make up two heads. And you can see the way they are actually constructed, right? It seems to be gripping onto a platter both from the top and the bottom. So yeah, it seems to be reading both sides at once. And that is of course why we have four prongs, because it is top and bottom for the first platter, and top and bottom for the second. And of course, everything that has been read goes out via a ribbon cable that goes to the electronics at the back, which I have removed earlier. And there you go, this is the whole assembly. Once again, there is some kind of chip that I've ripped up. And I guess these are the guys doing the heavy lifting, of course, the components here are the ones transferring all the data down to the rest of the circuit board and it also receives messages telling it to move the head back and forth. So I still haven't gotten this last platter out and I'm trying really hard to do that. Alright, so the method in which I have liberated the final platter here is actually by removing the screw. I guess the purpose of this particular component is just to, you know, hold the read and write hits because this is basically as far as they can swing 
So I guess getting rid of this will allow me to pour out the last platter. Like so. So that's one. That's both of the platters actually out of there. And the remaining assembly, which is what we have here, is actually still really heavy. And I imagine the reason why this is so is because of the motor that is required to drive this. This feels like a very heavy, very well built, you know, piece of equipment. And I guess you need that because hard drives, of course, do spin very, very fast. So yeah, basically that is every important part of a hard drive. In fact, I'm going to try and dig around and see if I can reveal any more. I doubt I can, but we'll try and we'll take a look. So right, as it turns out, there really isn't very much else. There seems to be some sort of a cushion here. I have no clue what this is actually for, but I'll look it up. I'll see if I can find anything. Now remember the reed head was actually here. This seems to be a track for it to, you know, skip back and forth. And what we actually have here is the other end of the magnet. So you saw me remove one of two ends earlier here. Whoa, that had a very strong pull. So yeah, this is one of the ends. The other is right here. So I'm going to try and remove this. This is actually a very strong magnet. And it feels like, you know, something I could reuse elsewhere. So basically, yeah, we've basically emptied out the inside of a hard drive. We have these two magnets, which I'm sure will come together like that. Very, very strong. So, you know, maybe I can attach it to some drawer or door or something like that. So yeah, there you have it. That is the inside of a hard drive. We have basically looked at, I believe, everything we can look at, even though, you know, I probably didn't analyze them very well. But yeah, apart from the motor, I believe that should be everything. Anyway, that's it for this Random Wednesday episode. I'm sorry I've been this incompetent, but well, I definitely gained some insights. I hope you did too. But yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in my other vlogs. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support. So yeah, just to prove this is a magnet. No? Alright, fine, never mind then.